Hello, this is the Radio Geek, and today for you, I'm going to take a look inside of the Prunus Model J982. This radio, as I mentioned before in a previous video, didn't have any tuning indicator or FM stereo indicator, and I guess the reason for that is they want to get as much runtime out of this radio as they can. This radio runs on a couple of triple A batteries and they claim that it'll run for 38 hours continuously and the reason for that they say is there's no speaker no LED display no power indicator the simpler design makes it super power saving and can continuously play for 38 hours on two triple A batteries so that's the reason I guess so today I thought I'd uh, open it up and see what's inside. This first shot here is of the little ferried bar antenna, which is actually in the bottom of the radio. If you're looking at the front of the radio, at the very bottom where it says FM stereo, um, it's down there at the bottom of the radio, um, running uh, horizontally across the bottom. As you can see, it's really tightly wound. It looks like a really nice job of winding the antenna wires on there. And they've got some glue or epoxy holding it in place. And they've done a neat job with that. There's just epoxy and glue in the areas that are holding it on there. It's not all over the inside of the radio or smeared around or anything. They did a really nice job uh, putting the antenna in there and winding it. It looks really good. It's another... Uh, shot of it here you can see um, how tight it is and about what size those uh, antenna wires are there um, the only kind of bad thing I found was um, there was this couple of spots um, where it looks like they may have hand soldered um, right here is an inductor it looks like it got a big glob of solder on the one end with some flux a little bit of flux up there by the uh, I think that's the volume wheel or could have been the tuning wheel I, I can't remember which um, but other than that the um, the inside of the radio looked pretty good as far as the assembly went this is what it looks like um, with the back off and this piece of plastic here is your is your tuning indicator this red piece of plastic and uh, if you're wondering how do you get that back together because when you open it it just kind of pops out like this just keep the red part just like it is right here fully extended and this main part here of the piece of red plastic it rests right here on this ridge of this battery uh, holder the back of the battery holder closest to the circuit board there's a little lip there and that piece of plastic rests right there and then this tip the end is in between the two batteries and that's your your dial indicator so it'll be all the way at the bottom position is where you're going to want it when you put the radio back together if you choose to take yours apart um, it's got a couple little pieces of foam there just as a cushion but um, everything else looks pretty decent um, they got the main radio chip right here and I think uh, this is uh, some kind of a, uh, a filter probably for the FM the 10.7 megahertz perhaps um, I did not see an audio chip. It could be on the other side of the board, but I didn't want to take it completely out because of the routing of these antenna wires and how small they were and getting everything back together. So I figured I'd just stop at that. This is a little bit of closer uh, photo. It's a little fuzzy, sorry. Um, but you can see how everything's routed. You can see th these two fine antenna wires right here, and then they make contact right here in this part of the circuit board here which I think I have a shot of that also um, but first I guess there's another shot of the uh, antenna uh, and the wiring and the, and the extra pieces of foam there um, here's those really fine antenna wires making contact with the circuit board those look like those are probably hand soldered as well but the surface mount stuff didn't look um, didn't look too bad another shot there there's some of the other areas where they did some hand soldering it looks like but um, 
Yeah, not, not too bad. There's there's not a lot of uh, um, extra residue and whatnot. So as far as the um, data sheet goes, it is a radio chip made by the Chinese company KT Micro. It's basically just a AM FM radio on a chip, literally. It's the KT0932M and it lists its many uh, features here and it's got a little uh, uh, description as well. And uh, there's the website there is www.ktmicro.com.cn. Now I don't believe if I remember correctly that I got this um, data sheet from their website. I believe their website just has a description of all their chips but it doesn't actually have data sheets that I could find anyway so I think I just uh, did some googling and found it somewhere else I don't remember where but I'm sure if you just google for the KT0932M um, you will find it. Um, it uh, it's got a lot of detail here of all the different things and all the features of this radio chip and uh, I guess if you're really interested, you could try to find it and download it here. But I'll just kind of slowly or just kind of scroll through it here. I think there's even a little uh, section in here as far as um, uh, like a little typical circuit kind of thing. This is like all the pins on the chip. It's a 16-pin chip, and it, it tells you what what the signals are and and what they are. And that's that is the radio pretty much. Um, in a nutshell right there that uh, that little chip and this is kind of an overview here of what the um, FM and AM receiver are and what the steps are now I noticed in here it said that um, the AM could be uh, set for channel spacing of 1 kilohertz 9 kilohertz or 10 kilohertz well this is just an analog dial that you're moving so I'm guessing they probably have it set for 1 kilohertz um, to kind of mimic the uh, the analog dial. Now, if it had a, a digital interface, um, then they would have to set it for either 9 or 10, or maybe an option to, to do one if you wanted to fine-tune, I suppose. I'm just guessing that's how it works. I did notice that when you're listening to um, a distant station, and it's kind of a, a weaker signal, that it'll capture it, and you'll be listening to it, and then when it fades out, it just bam it's just gone it disappears it doesn't fade out it's just the signal gets to a certain point where it just completely just drops it and then I'm sure as the signal level increases it could have been at that same signal level that you were listening to it before but it still won't capture it so I think there's some uh, you know some hysteresis there where it doesn't snap in and out it basically says okay I'm looking for this threshold of a signal and if I don't see that I need it to be you know this much greater before I'm gonna lock on again um, so I don't continuously just capture uh, reject capture reject you know there's there's some there's some play in there you know some kind of a signal um, threshold that it has to be in for it to recapture because I've noticed that when you're listening to a weak station that if you lose the station it tends not to come back uh, and when you're tuning you have to move the tuning reel very slowly because if you move too fast it doesn't have enough time to um, to capture the signal now this is the uh, typical application circuit and basically it's the, it's the radio chip and it's got some other things on there like a headphone and it's got you know some uh, LED AM FM uh, indicator which this radio doesn't have um, it's got a, an LED you could put in there for tuning then again this radio doesn't have that because they're going for that um, battery uh, savings so basically you have the radio chip you've got your ferry bar antenna you have um, looks like a 32.768 kilohertz uh, a crystal with a couple of uh, 24 picofarad capacitors and the radio chip and maybe a headphone jack if you were going to do it the way they did it and not have a speaker um, and they've got the bill of materials here and what everything is but um, yeah so you know there is not much to this radio 
as far as uh, what's inside but it does a really uh, good job and it works rather well and I thought it was uh, worth a look inside to see what was in there thought maybe you guys might want to be uh, involved in seeing what's inside there as well so hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you next time this is the radio geek